Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're all having a lovely day. You're likely having a better day than the owner of this laptop. They were performing very basic maintenance on their device and they ruined the motherboard. And I'd like to explain how so that when you're doing this type of routine maintenance on your device, you don't do the same thing. They were replacing their battery, which is something I fully believe that you should be able to do at home. I'm not gonna discourage you from doing it at home. Rather, I like to empower you with some knowledge on how to find the right part for your device so you don't make the mistake that this gentleman did. This is a very common mistake, which is assuming that a laptop model are all gonna use the same parts if it has the same model number. This is something that used to happen to me a lot when I had a parts company. I used to have a parts company that sold parts to the end consumer, and it was very, very common that people would destroy the parts and send them back to me as I went over in this video. And it is incredibly, incredibly frustrating, as you can tell by my raging face each time I put, click on a different timestamp. So I want to give one basic example. Let's talk about something like the Acer 5517. The Acer 5517 was what I call a transitionary period laptop. On the outside, all Acer 5517s look the same as you can see here, all, they, they look like this. It's just your standard little cheap Acer laptop. However, depending on when you purchased it, you could have gotten one with two completely different screen technologies. If you ordered it in early 2010, you may be getting an N156B3 LOB screen in your laptop, which is a fluorescent backlit screen. It uses a fluorescent technology for the light and it has the connector in the upper right corner over here. If you ordered it in late 2010 or early 2011, you may have gotten an Acer 5517 with an LED backlit display. This has the connector in the bottom left corner. It is a different connector altogether. It uses an LED backlight, not fluorescent, totally different technology, not compatible at all. Yet, in spite of that, you had lots of people that were purchasing an LED backlit screen for their fluorescent backlit laptop. They simply assume that if I type Acer 5517 screen into Google or eBay or Amazon, I just order whatever the cheapest one is and I'll get a screen that fits my device. What further compounded this and made it worse was the large price disparity in these two screens. Once a part is no longer available, it is more scarce. If there's a low supply, but same amount of demand, price goes up. How, what does that mean? Well, the N156B3 LOB was selling for about $120 at the time. The M156B6 LOB, which was the LED backlit one, was selling for about $50. So if you search Acer 5517 laptop screen and you think all Acer 5517s use the same screen because it's the same model laptop, then you might buy the $50 screen instead of the $120 screen. And what happens when they do that is they try to figure out a way to jam it in and then they destroy their device. I often got chargebacks because of this on an almost daily basis and I would have in large capital letters Open your device. Make sure your device uses this one because there are two different screens that have pictures. Nobody reads. It doesn't matter how big you make it. Nobody reads it. I used to talk to other people in the business and they said it's impossible. Uh, you're never going to do that. And a big part of the reason is if the device is still working, most people don't want to take apart their device and then have to put it back together again so that they could partially use it in the meantime, only to have to disassemble it again when working parts come. So people would often buy the LED backlit screen instead of the fluorescent and destroy their laptop. This is something that's been happening very often now with this A1286 model MacBook Pro. So A1286 it denotes a number of different models. You have 2008, 9, 10, 11, and 12. You have five different years, and sometimes they'll use a different motherboard in the same year just to you know, keep you on edge. Now, I want to go over what this person did, why I think they likely did it, so that you don't make this mistake going into the future. This is a battery replacement, very basic repair to do, and as you can see, this battery connector doesn't really seem to want to fit nicely into here. And the reason that this doesn't want to fit nicely into here is because this is a 2009 and 10 MacBook Pro battery that is trying attempted to be put into a 2012 MacBook Pro. This is an 820-3330 motherboard and they are putting the wrong battery inside of it. So if you search for A1286 battery online, you just type in A1286 battery, you will get a number of different results because there are a number of different A1286 batteries. But a lot of people will think that this is this the same laptop. So if I have A1286 battery, uh, you'll get one that looks like this, one that looks like this, one that looks like this. This has a short cable. This has a longer cable. Uh, this one is a removable one, so it has no cable at all. And it can get very confusing. Now, what makes it more confusing is that when you're looking at a low resolution picture, you may not think there are three different batteries for your device. You may think that there are only two different batteries for your device. So the proper battery for this device 
would be this one over here. It looks very similar. Like, it's very, very similar. It's a giant black rectangle with this little wire coming out. So again, if you're looking on the screen and you see this, this, you may think, okay, mine's not that, it's this, but you're not really gonna tell the difference between this and this. However, it is an important uh, distinction because one of these batteries over here is an A1321 and the other battery is an A1382. The A1382 is used in 2011 and 12 models. The A1321 is used in 2009 and 2010 models. Further, what's contributing to the problem causing people to purchase the wrong battery for their device is not only the fact that they think that all A1286 batteries are the same, but that the battery for the A1321 model is consistently priced below that of the A1382 model, therefore providing a financial incentive for people to purchase the wrong battery for their device. There is a financial incentive for people to try to buy the older battery for the newer computer, even if it will not work, if you just take a look at any of these websites. The moment I take a look at Amazon and I start scrolling, A1382 shows up at $53.99, and what I searched for was A1286 battery, yet A1321 shows up at $36. A1321 is 30 bucks, scroll down more, A1382 is 54 bucks. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out why so many people are buying the wrong battery. I never have this the other way around. I never have somebody come in with a 2010 computer that they kill by putting a 2012 battery in it, but I routinely have people coming in with a 2012 machine that they killed by putting a 2010 battery in it. So this is a combination of lack of knowledge and also the desire to save money, which admittedly is a fine desire. It's what drives people to fix their old stuff rather than buy new, and I commend you for it, I just wanna make sure that you're doing it properly. Now you may wonder, what is the difference? What could possibly be so different between these years of battery? And this is where I just come to absolute, again, it's, I, I'm, maybe an engineer can explain to me what the benefit is of changing this from year to year, other than potentially confusing the end user who will then destroy their device, but I would like to sh demonstrate to you what the difference is between these different years and models. So I'm gonna open up Flex Board View here, which is Paul Daniels' amazing board view software so that you can see what it is I see on the screen. So I'm gonna go over to the battery connector. Now on a 2012 model, here's what you have. Battery plus, PPV, BAT, G3 hot connection. So you have battery plus, that's battery power. It's gonna be 12 volts over here, 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts. Then you have data line, sys detect, data line, ground, ground, ground. Now let's see what it is you get on a 2010 model. On a 2010 model, yeah, it's, just, it's just an error, it's a typical. Okay, over here, uh, you get ground, ground, ground on the left, and then you have power, on the right. So between 2009 and 10, and then 2011 and 12, Apple took a battery that has virtually the same form factor. Again, this battery literally fits in the machine the exact same. It looks almost identical to that battery, but they shifted ground and power. Now, what do you think is gonna happen if you plug a battery into a device with ground and positive reversed? And an expensive trip to Rossman Repair. So how do you avoid this? Good question. When purchasing a part for your laptop, you should not simply purchase the part for your laptop based on the number that's on the bottom of the computer. So many of these devices have a panel on it, which of course I don't have because I'm a shitty unprepared YouTube video content creator, but usually they have a number on the bottom of the panel that will tell you what the model of the device is. Don't purchase your parts based on that number open the device up and look at the part number on the part itself. So instead of purchasing the part based on the part number of the laptop, which is A1286, or in Acer's case, Acer 5517, purchase it based on the number that is on the actual part itself. Typically, the LCD screen, the battery, or anything else will have a part number on it that you can use to then find a cross-compatible part. You might not find the exact same part, so for instance, when we're talking about screens, you may not find another N156B6LOB, you may find an LP156WH2TLAB, you may find a B156XW02V6, you may find a number of different types of screens, but those will still at least be compatible. At least the vendor that you are purchasing from will know, okay, if he's searching for an N156B6LOB, we don't have that, but we can send him a B156XW02V6 from AU Optronics, and he won't tell the difference because it's the same screen. But if you simply buy based on the model number of the laptop, that is fundamentally not enough information to ensure you get the right part. And while getting the wrong screen might be something where you're, it's very obvious, this does not fit, I will not use this. When you're getting a battery, you could literally be switching ground and positive, which when it comes to a lithium ion battery can end very poorly. And again, 
why Apple made it so that this connector, while it's not perfect, kind of fits in there. And the battery kind of fits in the computer. And it looks the same when ground and pl plus power are reversed. You're going to have to ask Apple about that. But so that you avoid an expensive trip to a repair shop like mine, always try to make your parts purchase based on the part number on the part itself rather than the part number of the laptop. Never assume that simply because the device that's in front of me has the same model number as this other device in front of me that they use the same part. Because often, even in the same model line, a manufacturer will change the part, they may switch positive and negative, they may change the entire technology for the screen they use in it, and much more. Always open it. I know that you don't want to have to open the device until you get the parts in. You're probably thinking, I don't want to do the work twice. I want to open my device once when the part comes in, do the repair successfully, and close it up, and then put it back together. I don't want to open it to figure out the part, then put it back together so that I can order it, then open it again so that I can fix it. You don't want to take it apart twice. I understand that. However, if you don't do that, not only are you going to have to take it apart twice, but you're also gonna have to pay somebody like me to fix it. And I'd like you to avoid having to pay somebody like me to fix it by doing the repair right the first time. So hopefully this video helped you when it comes to purchasing the proper part for your laptop. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.